This is key number one out of 10 to grow your business by 10 times. In this episode, I'm going to address how to 10 times your income by focusing on the right fit clients. Get ready. This is a game changer. So I'm Doug Andrew. I've been a business owner now for more than 48 years. In fact, I've owned several businesses. I'm a financial strategist. I'm a retirement planning specialist, but I have helped many entrepreneurs grow their businesses by 10 times in 60 months or less while simplifying their life. So get ready. In this episode, I am going to address the first of 10 keys and I'm going to show you uh, the 80-20 rule and how you can flip that. We'll talk about uh, asking yourself four questions that will help you identify the profile of your ideal client so you can begin to market to the right fit clients. This will make all the difference in the world, I assure you. So as we proceed, this has been a presentation that I have tweaked for decades. I have spoken at the Million Dollar Roundtable. I have spoken to orthodontists, to realtors, to CPAs, to tax attorneys. I don't care what you do, but I'm in the financial services industry. And if you are, get ready. This will be a game changer. So as we proceed, I actually, at the end of this episode, uh, will show you how you can get a free copy of my book called The 10 Keys Transformation. And uh, you can get a digital version of this or even the audio because I did it in my voice. But as we proceed here, I'm going to, in this episode, share with you the first of 10 keys where I actually, from 2003 to 2007, in less than five years, I took my income uh, by 10 times from about a net of 500 grand a year up to over 5 million a year while simplifying my life. The first key in this transformation is to identify the profile of your ideal client. Now, if this is already <laughs> resonating with you, just make sure you post a comment. You click like you share with somebody who ought to watch this episode also. I have over 700 episodes on this channel, so you can subscribe for free. Now, as we dive into this, so I mentioned the 80-20 rule. Let's make sure you understand what I mean by that. 80% of most entrepreneurs' uh, revenue comes from the top 20% of their clients or customers or patients. And so this is true across many different industries. And what I want to show you how to do is how to flip that. So when I went to the Genius Network, because I've invested over 3 million bucks in my life, sharpening my saw, Stephen Covey would say, one of the quotes I wrote down, do you want to fish for minnows or for whales? Yeah, I want to go for the clients that uh, will bring in, you know, the top 80% of my income. But most people only spend 20% of their time with those people. So you need to flip that. I had to ask myself questions. What am I so busy doing, collecting and picking up, you know, the bronze and the silver coins, so to speak, and passing up the gold ones? So this key is designed to help you focus on getting the golden ones, the golden patients and clients. So when we talk about this uh, top 80%, what I realized in my financial services practice is that there were uh, five different categories of people. And I call these strivers, arrivers, thrivers, survivors, and divers, okay? And so the strivers in a nutshell are those people who a lot of uh, financial uh, authors out there call financial jellyfish. Uh, they will always have too much month left at the end of their money. And, uh, you know, there are certain advisors on radio and TV that cater to those people, you know, act your wage, cut up your credit cards and so forth. I realize that I can help those people, but frankly, they don't have anything to invest. They need to learn discipline. So that's not who I market to directly. I can point them to people or to books to learn that. The arrivers are those who begin to uh, learn to live on less than what they earn. They have a discretionary dollars to sock away and they understand the three marbles of wealth accumulation, compound interest, tax-free accumulation, and safe positive leverage. So they begin to arrive, but there's a difference between the arrivers who maybe can sock away, you know, 5,000 bucks a month or whatever, and the thrivers. 
Thrivers repeat the process. They don't just get one rental property. They don't just save $5,000 a month and leave it at that. They compound their returns and they get additional properties. If they're a dentist, they get several dental offices and, and so forth. They leverage. And so those are the thrivers. There's a lot of people out there that as they approach retirement, they hunker down and they just want to survive. They don't want to outlive their money. They stop doing what grew their wealth. I don't want to deal with those that end up diving where they just hunker down and they become a clam on the bottom of the ocean and wait for plankton to float to them. And sure enough, uh, their wealth dives, their health dives. My key market was the arrivers to the survivors before they turn into divers. So everything that I began to communicate were to these people right here, especially this middle part. I want everybody to be a thriver. Once I got clear on that, I answered four questions. Now, I got this inspiration from a book called Attracting Perfect Customers by Jan Brogne and Stacey Hall. I actually had lunch with these wonderful ladies right uh, after they released this book. Now, before I go any further, Stay with me to the end of this episode because I'm going to show you how to connect all this together. But I would really encourage you to subscribe to this channel because I post an in-depth answer to a business question or a financial question almost on a daily basis. So let's go through these four questions quickly. I ask myself periodically, sometimes once every year, what are the attributes of my ideal client? So for example, I put down when I first did this, maybe, you know, they're open-minded, they're punctual, they're appointment keepers, they're my kind of people, they're grateful for advice, they're free in expression of their feelings, they're honest in their communication, they use the tools that I provide for them, they respect and trust me. So those are the kinds of attributes I'm looking for. I want people that uh, brighten the office when they enter it, not when they leave it, if you know what I mean, okay? Now, the next question I ask is, what makes my ideal client tick. In other words, um, who and what is most important to them? So as I began to ask myself, my ideal client is usually the 55 to 75 year olds who have been around the block. They've made the mistakes. Uh, they don't claim to know it all. In fact, they are humble because they understand the mistakes they've made with their money. And now they are ready to learn. And so I have actually a scorecard that helps me identify these people based upon what makes them tick. They uh, love their family, their children, their grandchildren. They want to teach them responsibility and accountability. They want to get rid of entitlement mentality. And hence I wrote a book to accommodate that, but they have high values. So once I understand what makes my ideal client tick, I'm ready for question number three. The next question is, what do your ideal clients expect you to deliver? So when I filled this out the first time, I would write down responses like, well, give them the same advice and direction that I follow, that I would give my own parents, okay? Clarify principles and be thorough. Be available directly and indirectly, okay? Communicate openly and honestly with them. Uh, be courteous and professional. Return phone calls within a time frame, okay? That's acceptable to everybody. Be proactive. Always have the latest and the greatest. Be on the cutting edge. Be on time. Finish what you start. Do what you say you're going to do and always say please and thank you. These are what my good friend Dan Sullivan calls the referability factors. You would not believe how many business owners do not understand uh, that it's very important that you do what you say you're going to do. You're on time. You finish what you start and you always say please and thank you. You do those four things and people will refer you. That seems like a no brainer to me. Let's go on to the fourth question. What do you need to do to improve your relationship or relationships with your ideal clients? So when I filled out this the very first time, I need to communicate my desire to constantly improve. Uh, clarify their plan for the future, one year, three years, five years, 10 years down the road uh, until they pass away. Conduct annual reviews so we stay on track give them a sense of belonging to a community of like-minded people. Show them appreciation. I mean, send them a Thanksgiving card. Everybody sends Christmas cards, but do something unique and show them appreciation. Provide reasons to respect me. Communicate that they meet my profile of an ideal client. Hey, Jim and Mary Jones, you know, you're one of our favorite clients because it's such a delight every time you come in, you're so teachable 
and uh, you put a lot of trust in us, and we frankly honor and respect that trust. You just brighten up the office every time you come. And maybe we have a pie or a rose for the wife. We do something to show them appreciation. Does that make sense? You create a meaningful transformation for them, which I'm going to explain in key number two. So be sure and search that episode. Watch all 10 episodes on this. So when you ask yourself those four questions and you constantly are updating that year by year, you then begin to tweak your marketing. You send out your messaging and your methods based upon attracting those clients that meet the profile by asking yourself these four questions. Does that make sense? Now, this is just key number one out of 10. Many times uh, when people read my book, The 10 Keys Transformation, what will end up happening is uh, in the book, there'll be a scorecard like this. And you'll go through and score yourself on the scorecard. And this is key number one across the top. I'll put it on the screen here in just a moment. But you'll also be able to print out a, a hard copy of the book, which is about this thick. And uh, you can get a digital version or the audio version. But I'll show you how you can claim your free copy in just a moment. But let me go through key number one real quick. This is the scorecard, and it's arranged from poor, fair, good, better to best. There's a statement in each one of these squares. You read across this first key, identify the profile of your ideal client, and whatever statement more accurately describes where you are at, you would put a score of three or four or five or six over here on the right. When you get through all 10 of these keys by watching all 10 episodes, you will have a total score, and it could be, you know, in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, but I know the answer to this question. Whatever your score is today in your business, how many of you know you want a higher score in the future? That's the purpose of these episodes is to help you raise your score. I've done this for uh, hundreds, now even uh, over a thousand entrepreneurs. We had 3,000 entrepreneurs come through a three-day course to learn this and many of them 10 times their practice in less than 60 months. So for example, on this particular one, if you feel desperate and will work with anyone who listens, who will fog a mirror, okay? And you're not aware of the profile, that'd be a one or a two. Buzz. If you know the attributes of your ideal client, but you don't know how to reach them or how to market to them, that would be only a three or four on a scale of one to 10. If you have adequate clients, but you're not sure how to improve the relationships or how to best deliver what they expect, uh, that's only a five or a six. If you know the profile of your ideal client, but you only get to spend about 20% of your time with the people that make up 80% of your income, that's not quite acceptable yet. That's, that's better, but not best. The best is if you're devoting 80% of your time with the people that make up 80% of your income, and that one change will take your revenue through the roof. This is where we want you to be. So that's why I invite you to claim your copy of the 10 Keys book. Simply go to 10, uh, free10keysbook.com or click on the link below, free10keysbook.com and you will be able to download a digital version or there's an option there for the audio. And then there's an 18 hour masterclass where you can learn more about how to claim your brighter future by understanding these concepts. This is the key to your brighter future with your business. Free10keysbook.com or you can go through the 18-hour masterclass online.